All right, for, uh, we're going to talk about motion diagrams, um, and, uh, and then we're going to talk about the area underneath the velocity versus time graph. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, I mean, this, this whole unit, we're talking about um, objects that are moving with constant velocity. Okay, and we've, we've already got a couple of ways of representing constant velocity motion. One of the ways is with the graph. So here's position as a function of time. And, uh, and we said, okay, here's my starting position. And then you just graph it. And, it, and as you move away at a, from the origin at a constant velocity, you have a constant slope. So this is a straight line. So this is a graphical representation or graphical graph. Oh, geez. A graphical model of the motion of the object. In other words, this we're representing something that's really happening. Your little buggy car is moving along the little number line. And uh, as time goes by, this shows you where it is. OK? Then we said, well, wait, we can, we can even make this shorter. We can represent it with a, an equation. This is a, a linear equation, right? y equals mx plus b, right? But instead of y, we're going to call the vertical axis x, which represents position. Equals, well, what was the slope of this line? Well, it's delta x, the rise, over delta t. Delta x over delta t, that's uh, the slope of this line, and it's a constant slope. And we call that velocity. Delta x over delta t, by definition, is called velocity. So this is velocity here. That's the slope of my straight line. What's my horizontal axis representing? Well, it's not x anymore. It is t for time. And then uh, what is my y-intercept? Well, actually, it's the x-intercept now, isn't it? It's the position when time was equal to 0. So we'll call that x sub 0. And now uh, what we've been doing, of course, is putting numbers here. What is the slope in meters per second? What is my? Uh, initial position in, or my starting position in meters, or sometimes we, we use centimeters instead if it's going really slow. Um, and so, um, so there we go. And this was a, a, what we call a mathematical model. We're using a mathematical equation to describe something that's really happening. Well, there's one other way of representing uh, motion. And uh, it's called a motion diagram. And in a motion diagram, you actually show the motion on the x-axis itself, on the position axis. OK, so this is my graphical model. This is my mathematical model. Now I'm going to come up with a diagrammatic model, a picture of the motion. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is put my, my, uh, my axis. And this is my position axis, let's say in meters. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, one thing students uh, sometimes get confused in is they say, they say well, look, over here is time, and that's my horizontal. So this must be time. No, no, no. This I, I, in my in my motion diagram, this is where I am. I'm drawing a picture of what's happening. Now let's say the buggy car starts at starts right here at t equals zero. That dot represents where it is at a certain instant in time. In this case, at t equals zero. OK, so let's say that um, um, you, you look at it at t equals 0. And then you say, OK, let's look at it when it's at t equals 1 second. Where is it at t equals 1 second? Well, maybe it's over here. So these are really fast buggy cars, faster than the ones that we played with. And then, so this is 0 seconds. This is 1 second. And then uh, the next. Um, we notice it's right here at two seconds. 
and then at three seconds, and then at four seconds, and then at five seconds. So I'm looking at the object at these time instants. So every second I look to see where the buggy car is located in space compared to the origin, that is its position, um, and this is basically a motion diagram. And notice that it does everything you want. It shows you where the object is, and it shows you when the object is there. Okay, at least every second. Okay, now there's one other thing I can add to my motion diagram. I can actually show the velocity. You see it's got constant velocity, and we can see that because, and I, for some reason I didn't draw it very well in there, but I'm going to draw these arrows. And these arrows represent the velocity of the object. So the dots, the dots represent the position. The arrows represent the velocity. Above the dots, I put the time at which that dot was um, um, looked at. And this is my motion diagram. And the motion diagram shows everything just like the graph does and the mathematical model does. This is a, sometimes called a motion diagram, is sometimes called a diagrammatic model. We're using a diagram to represent the, the, the object's motion. Now from this, from this motion diagram, I mean, if this is what's given, I can draw the um, position versus time graph. Huh. Sure. I just take this position axis and flip it over. And I'm going to go from 0 to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And notice that I kind of changed uh, my scale a little bit to make it fit on the paper more easily. Well, that's OK to do that. But now I'm going to spread that motion out over time, 0 to 5 seconds. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is position. And I'll just grab the points at 0. We're at 2. At 1 second, we're at uh, 3 and a half. So 1, 2, 3 and a half. And then at 2 seconds, uh, we're at uh, 5 meters. At 3 seconds, uh, we're at 6 and a half. So here's 6 and a half, right about there. Four. We're at eight, and then five. We're at nine and a half, and it makes a nice straight line. So from from the motion diagram, I was able to draw a position versus time graph. Can I write the equation from this? Sure, I can by using the motion diagram or the graph. I can say x is equal to, well, what's, how far, uh, how much am I changing my position every second? I mean, look at, look at it. How much am I changing it every second? How many meters every second? Well, I went from here. I went from 2 to 3.5. What is that? 1.5. I went from 3.5 to 5. 1.5. 1.5, 1.5. It appears that I am moving 1.5 meters every second in a positive direction. Yes? Do you see that? So the, the, this is 1.5 meters per second times time plus my, what is my starting position? Two meters. So there's, there's my mathematical model. So here, I, I've got all the models I'm going to use this year. I've got the motion diagram, the position versus time graph, and the um, mathematical model of position as a function of time. 
Now, you're, you're probably getting pretty bored with this, this constant velocity motion. It is pretty boring stuff. I mean, this is just a little car moving along a line at a constant speed. Not very exciting. Okay, but learning how to use these models with something very, very simple is important because in the next unit, we're going to deal with acceleration where the velocity is going to be changing and it's going to get more complicated. So if you can master these ideas using this very simple situation, um, then uh, when we get to the more complicated stuff, you're going to be uh, in good shape. Okay, so that's motion diagrams. Now let's talk about uh, the area underneath a velocity versus time graph. Um, copy this problem down. I'd say if, if, if I walk at a velocity of 2 meters per second for 5 seconds, how much will I change my position? Or in other words, how far will I walk in a particular direction, in the positive direction? Now, you don't need, write that problem down. This really doesn't require, this is not a trick question. This doesn't require a, a calculator or anything. If I'm walking two meters every second for five seconds, how far am I going to go? Ten meters, right? That's absolutely right. But I want to show you something that's extremely profound. I'm going to graph velocity as a function of time here. Okay, so, so now we're going to graph velocity in meters per second as a function of time. So one, two, three, four, five. And this is going to be one, two meters per second. So what's the velocity? The velocity is a constant, right? So at time t equals zero, my velocity is two meters per second. I start off going two meters per second. And then at one second, I'm still going two meters per second. And then I'm still going two meters. And I'm still going. Every second, I'm, my velocity is constant, not changing at all. So that makes a horizontal line, right? We've talked about that already. And you know that I'm going to change my position by a total of 10 meters, right? We were, we've already got that. Now, one way you got that is to multiply these two things together, right? I can say that my change in position is equal to velocity times time. This is my total change in position, velocity times time. Well, look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to count the squares underneath the graph. I'm going to color them in too. I'm going to cross hatch. This is called cross hatching when you just color them like that. Okay? The area underneath this graph represents something. It re yes, it represents my displacement. Let's look at one little square here. Okay, here's one of those little squares. It has a width of how much? What's the width of this square? From two to three is how much? One. One what? One second. Now, here's what we're doing. This is an abstraction. We're using a length to represent a span of time. Now, what is the height of this square? Well, from, from one to two is what? One, but one what? meters per second, right? The, the, the vertical axis is representing velocity in meters per second. Well, how do you find the area of a square? Or the area of any rectangle? Huh? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the width times the height, right? So what is, um, so the area of this thing is equal to one meter per second times one second. 
Well, what's a meter per second times a second? It's a meter. What's one times one? It's one. So this represents one meter of displacement. So each square underneath here represents a meter of displacement. And this makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I mean, in the first second, I walked one, two meters. So each second, I'm, I'm adding two meters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten meters. This is a big deal. Whenever you have a product of two quantities to get a third quantity, you can graph one quantity as a function of the other, and the area underneath that graph represents the other quantity. And what we're doing right here is integral calculus. This is called integration. Now, many of you, either this year or next year, are going to take calculus for the first time. And one of the hardest things is, is, is doing integral calculus. But uh, I'm going to show you what integral calculus means. And then next year, or this year, when you take your, in, in your math class, you'll actually learn how to do it. And you'll go through all the rigorous mathematical proofs and everything. But the area underneath this graph represents my total delta x, my total displacement. OK, that is all. Oh, you know what? Because there's uh, people. Now, this, uh, before I, um, this is uh, the worksheet we're going to do. And since hopefully, uh, if some of my seniors are um, watching this, they can just freeze frame this. If you're watching this on YouTube, just freeze frame this. I'm going to zoom out so you get the whole worksheet. Oh, not quite there. I need to lift that up. So this is the whole thing right here. And so you have three problems. Um, this, you have, you have uh, copy this down, copy the questions and answer them. It, 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 it should go very quick if you, if you move. And then number two, I give you these data, draw the graphs, answer the questions. Uh, same thing here. Uh, draw the graph uh, in uh, position versus time, and then answer the questions. Do what it says to do. And that is all.